Good evening. I am John Haldeman, the principal of Donegal High School. And on behalf of the faculty, administration, and staff of the Donegal School District, I would like to welcome you to the 68th Annual Commencement Exercises for Donegal High School. At this time, I would ask that you stand, gentlemen, remove your caps, and honor America as the Donegal High School Chorus member, Emma Kazat, sings our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting Please be seated. Great job, Emma. We will begin this evening's program with a series of students' presentations. It is now my pleasure to present to you the president of the class of 2022, Ryan Beatty. Ryan will be attending Youngtown State University to study theater. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Beatty. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Donegal Class of 2022's graduation ceremony. I would first like to thank Mr. Haldeman and the rest of the administrators, as well as the teachers and staff. Most importantly, I would like to thank all the community members for joining me and my fellow classmates whom I welcome as well. For this small moment in time, we are all gathered here to end one journey and start a new one. High school is widely considered one of the most influential times in a person's life. I'm sure that any adult you meet would remember their high school experience. Some of those experiences were great, while others not so much. Whether or not a person had a positive or negative experience, they make it to the end, ready to move on to the next chapter of their lives. Each one of us has spent at least 12 years in school. If anyone sitting with us today could remember these times before school as vividly as during their school years, I would be impressed. Nevertheless, each of the little moments through school helped define who each of us is sitting here today. I would like you all to think for one second. If a bus pulled up here today and could take you back to a specific time in your 12 years of school, where would you go? Would you want to change anything? Think hard about that time in your life, because I guarantee that it will be a memory that you carry along with you throughout the rest of your life. Now, 
Let's see if I can't jog your memories a little more as we take a trip together on an imaginary bus ride through our class's 12 years of school at Donegal. First stop, primary and grade school. It's the first day of school your parents drive you, a six-year-old child, to a big brick building and put you with what they call teachers and trust that they will keep you and 15 other kids just like you busy and on good behavior for about six hours. I can still pick out little things from when we were that young, like the color-based behavior chart. Anyone who had a class with me knew my name was on the red square a lot. <laughs> we can also remember the change from school without much technology to where we are today, each having our own computers for schoolwork. I don't know about the kids in other schools, but at Maytown, we had black box TVs for our announcements. Then the projectors came along. And no, not, not the ones we use now, but they were standalone ones on wheels and had a very, very large pen that you really had to hit the board with to get anything to work. Our class was really interesting. We were one of the last to be split into three different schools. There were the Maytown kids, Donegal Springs, and the primary school. At the beginning of it all, we weren't even together as a class. That came later. Though, our experiences in those three different buildings are unique, we can all find many fond memories of grade school. The next stop on our school journey was the intermediate school. Every time I think back to my time in the intermediate school, my mind always goes to one teacher. I can't remember the name of them, but they would always appear on the announcements one day or another, dressed up like Hulk Hogan. And I, I, it just it went from there, guys. <laughs> I also remember leprechauns and um, a duo of two teachers that somehow had more energy than us kids. Other than the fun and amazing talents that the teachers possessed at that school, things about what our own class did are also worth noting. Like, for example, how we were one of the last classes to learn how to write cursive. During recess, some kids played Foursquare, some ran around the field, and some were on the playground equipment. I personally floated around. I was always doing something different each day. One of, if not the largest highlights of grade school was Math Mall. <laughs> For those of you here that are not familiar with Math Mall, it was a class-wide activity that spanned the entire school year. Throughout the year, from doing noteworthy things, we would earn currency that would be then used at Math Mall. The kids were free to choose their groups as well as decide what they wanted to do at their stand. I remember my group made origami. We thought we sold a lot until other people sold much more than us. After a long four years, we were finally ready for no recess and eight hours of classes in the greatest two years of our life, junior high. <laughs> now, I know that all of you would love to hear a lot about junior high, so I made sure that this section is the longest segment of my speech this evening. No, it's not. <laughs> On a serious note, many of Many things that happened to us during junior high paved the way for so many things in high school. All the good, bad, and ugly things taught us and helped us better prepare for the four years after. I strongly remember the extravaganzas, which our amazing staff put together to celebrate going on winter and summer break. This was also the time that Mr. Brady sang the corn song. <laughs> in seventh grade, we were one day tasked to write a letter to ourselves that we could only receive when we graduated. I know a lot of us went and got our seventh grade letters this past week, and when I read my handwritten title, I thought to myself, oh God, my handwriting got worse. <laughs> and the first thing that I wrote to myself was, hey, first off, did your handwriting get any better? I know that all of us have written some interesting stories and how different we were compared to now. So I will conclude junior high by encouraging you to reflect on those stories and leave the rest of the history of our own writing and move to our present. High school, the final stop on our journey and our high point of school. Do you remember how excited we were to make it to freshman year? Honestly, freshman year was an absolute blast. Maybe it was all the newfound freedoms and getting to be in classes with students in other grades. And finally, we were able to somewhat choose what classes we were able to take. All was great, and we were set for four fun-filled, normal years. 
Our second year started off great too, until the second semester, when everything turned upside down. On Friday the 13th, it really had to be that day, didn't it? Of March 2020, we were sent on a two-week vacation. As we all know, that turned out to be much, much more. But hey, no final exams didn't sound all that bad, right? So there we were as high schoolers, stuck as home with nothing to do but watch TV or the news, and hope that something would change. Hip hip hooray, our sophomore year went astray. Now, junior year, the first year back from quarantine, had to have been one of the hardest years I have ever had. Masks. I remember walking into school and realizing I have no idea what anyone's faces look like anymore. Anytime you met someone new or had a new teacher, I would try to figure out what, they, what the other half of their face looked like. There were so many rules that any other year would be considered odd, like splitting the hallways and staircases into one-way lanes. I felt like I was driving a car and I wasn't even in a vehicle. The quick changes from online to in-person and even school days just being canceled were a challenge, but we slowly but surely moved to where we are now, together without masks and not six feet apart. And finally, senior year arrived and felt like a great back to normal year for all of us. All of our extracurriculars were back to normal seasons. We could hold sports events with the spectators and ceremonies in person. Not to mention getting the school dances back. I believe that what made this year truly unique was that I saw this class come together in ways I've never seen before. Many more bonds were created and many of us have gotten to the point of making our mark on this school. Maybe it was all the events opening back up. Maybe it was our last hurrah. Or maybe it was that we could see everyone's faces again. Whatever it was, you can't deny that we had a unique high school experience because we came in normally, it all changed, and we watched it come back to normal again. After all of it, we finally got here. Commencement. This is the last time we'll sit together as a class. From here, each and every one of us is splitting paths at least a little bit but our shared past will always unify us. The past, it's a funny thing to me. I'm sure we've all heard the phrase, learn from your mistakes before. I know that if many of us had the opportunity to stop and relive some moments from these past 12 years, we would want to make some different decisions. But 12 years is a long time, and 12 years allows for a lot of learning to be done. And it's all right not to know everything yet, because we have the rest of our lives to learn. This evening, we create one last memory of high school. I would like to welcome you to the final stop of our 12-year-old journey. Commencement. Thank you, Ryan. At this time, our senior chorus will make their way to the stage and will present their senior class song, Fly Away Home, written by Pink Zebra. The chorus is directed by Mrs. Megan Catterbone. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the senior chorus for the class of 2022.
I would now like to present to you this evening's student speakers. Our first student speaker is the valedictorian of the class of 2022, Hunter Gaiman. I am pleased to announce that Hunter will be attending Bucknell University to study engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, Hunter Gaiman. Thank you, Mr. Haldeman. It is my honor to speak today on behalf of the graduating class of 2022. I would also like to extend a warm thank you to all the teachers, administration, faculty, and other faculty members who made the past four years possible. Without you all, none of us would be standing here today ready to walk across the stage in a few short moments. Looking back to freshman year, none of us were prepared to face the challenges associated with graduating high school and pursuing college or full-time employment. And yet, because of the amazing employees of the Donegal School District, we all sit here today. Thank you. To all my classmates, thank you for making Donegal High School an amazing place for the last four years. We all overcame challenges to reach this day and couldn't have done it without each other. While we've all heard it a million times by now, the unexpected and disruptive COVID-19 pandemic completely upended our high school experience. And yet, everyone here pushed onward to succeed. Stephen Hawk Hawking once stated that intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. And I think that in a rapidly developing world, there is no definition of intelligence more critical than that. Our overcoming of the COVID-19 pandemic during high school speaks volumes to our ability to adapt to change, as there was no change greater felt than this pandemic. While it has obviously caused a terrible last couple years, one positive resulting from the pandemic is our newfound ability to adapt to change. We're prepared for anything the world will throw at us as we disperse throughout the country and throughout the world. I mean, if we could handle Mr. Haldeman's dad jokes at lunch and on the announcements, surely we are prepared for anything. <laughs> our unprecedented high school experience will allow us to adapt to a quickly advancing world and succeed in our many different career paths. Therefore, if you ever feel overwhelmed by the challenges of the world, hold your chin up. We successfully overcame the pandemic to stand at graduation today, and we're prepared to overcome adversity in the future. While the popular saying 
Is that the only constant in life is change? Our experiences from the last few years will be more than enough to handle any future changes we might encounter. We are prepared to do more than simply sit back and react to the world changing around us, however. We are also prepared to catalyze change ourselves. Nelson Mandela once said that education is the most powerful weapon with which you can use to change the world. And armed with the weapon of education from Donegal High School, we are ready to make an impact in our local community and the world at large, each of us with our unique gifts. We aren't all destined to be famous actors and politicians, but from future doctors to teachers to trades workers, we all possess the same background that has prepared us to better our own lives and the lives of those around us. Moreover, our education has formed within us a stronger character, one where we are prepared to be more accepting of diverse viewpoints, more empathetic towards those dealing with struggles, and more closely connected with others in general. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. believed that, quote, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education, end quote. As we develop our educational selves and our moral characters as one, we are better able to dedicate our knowledge and time to just causes. And as we are all seated here together, we all have developed both our educational and moral sides. The past four years at Donegal High School have developed this character within each of us. And I sincerely hope that we will all continue to foster it in the future rather than losing it once we step across the stage this evening. So, as you all can see, we are well prepared to adapt to the to the world's constant changes. We are well prepared to make a difference in our communities, and we are well prepared to accept differing viewpoints to become more well-rounded American citizens. Donegal has done a phenomenal job of preparing us to succeed as adults in the feared real world. And now, classmates, the burden is upon each one of you to apply the skills and knowledge you've acquired. While it might seem easy to simply get a job, settle down, and live out the rest of your life I encourage each one of you to continue learning and developing your talents and hobbies, even after you've wrapped up your formal education. In a broken world full of malice, hate, sadness, and fear, it is our obligation to use our special talents and unique callings to make the world a better place. And part of that is continuing to learn about ourselves and others post high school. So just because you don't have teachers holding you accountable with grades, hold yourselves accountable with a high moral standard and great integrity not becoming complacent with how the world is right now just because you're comfortable with how you're living. No change you make is too small. And even if you just change the life of one other person, that person has the chance, chance to change many other lives as well. So as you depart from Donegal High School for the last time today, I encourage you all, do not take the education you've received for granted. There are many around the world who would give anything to receive a fraction of the education that you've received throughout the last 12 years. You've been provided with the foundation to make a great difference in this world, so don't sit back and waste it. I hope that each of you make a difference in the future as doctors leading new medical research, as community leaders helping with local initiatives, as activists working for environmental sustainability, as philanthropists making a difference in hundreds of other lives, or as a part of one of the other countless movements working to better the world. I look forward to seeing how each of you makes a difference for all humanity. You are all more than prepared to step up to this challenge and overcome any change that comes your way. So embrace change and use it to transform the world. Thank you. Thank you, Hunter, and congratulations. Our second student speaker this evening is the salutatorian of the class of 2022 Diavion Musser. I am pleased to announce that Diavion will be attending Temple University to stutter, study genetic counseling. Ladies and gentlemen, Diavion Musser. Hello, class of 2022. It is an honor to speak to every single one of you on this special day. When Mr. Haldeman told me I would have to write a seven to 10 minute speech and present it to my entire class, I wasn't really up for it. First of all, the idea of speaking to so many people made me nervous. Secondly, I was worried that everyone would be annoyed at me for talking for so long. But now I'm here, so I guess you can say there is a first time for everything. 
Many of you know me as a quiet person who doesn't have a lot to say. As a result, this speech is out of character for me, but it is definitely an opportunity for growth. Speaking of growth, it is one of the most important things we can focus on as we transition from high school into adulthood. I think all of us can agree that we have grown a lot since freshman year. The changes we've experienced both as a collective and as individuals are due in part to not only typical maturing, but also the first that happened during our high school years. When I mention first, many of you probably think of the pandemic. It may be an over-discussed period of our lives, but I think it is necessary to consider how much this shared experience altered the way we behave and view special moments, such as this graduation. After spending so much time alone and without many events we look forward to as high school students, such as dances, sporting events, and just hanging out with our peers, we have grown to appreciate quality time. By learning to savor the small things in life, many of us have found much more joy in our senior year, and we will grow to find more joy in the future. Additionally, by having time alone to reflect, many of us have discovered our true passions that have now shaped our plans for the future. When you reflect on who you were freshman year and compare that image to who you are now, are you proud of who you have become? If not, your growth doesn't stop here. This is only the end of one chapter of life and the beginning of a new one. Some adults claim that the time they spent in high school was the best years of their life, which honestly scares me a bit. I think we should constantly strive for better moments, and entering a new era of freedom certainly allows us to do that. Freedom encourages growth, so this is a prime time for us to seek experiences that are not only enjoyable, but make us better people. Wherever your plans are taking you, whether it be college, trade school, the armed forces, or the workforce, do what makes you feel like you're living through the best years of your life. Finding what makes you happy is by far one of the best ways to grow. If your plans change along the way, or you are still struggling to find your plan, that's also perfectly fine. Unfortunately, too much pressure is put on teenagers to have their entire lives planned straight out of high school, despite the fact that life constantly throws curveballs that redirect our goals. My career plans have changed plenty of times during my school career, which I'm sure many of you can relate to. In elementary school, I wanted to be a journalist, but the amount of research papers we had to write at the junior high school made me realize I didn't want to write every day for the rest of my life. In junior high school, I wanted to be a psychologist until I realized I could barely manage my own emotions. And up until this year, I wanted to go to medical school to become a pediatrician. But after experiencing senioritis, I don't think I can go to school for that long. Now I've settled on getting a master's degree in genetic counseling, which is far from my first plan of being a journalist. As a result, my hope is that although many of us are going our separate ways, we can still support each other through the confusion of figuring out who we truly are and where life will ultimately take us. Many of us are going our separate ways. However, that will make the rare moments in which you run into a little slice of home on campus, at work, or even just running errands, even more special since we can see how each of us has grown since our graduation day. Furthermore, since we are all diverging onto different paths, we will all meet a plethora of new people who can grant us a more holistic view of the world and challenge us to grow. I urge all of you to have open minds when approaching those with life experiences you may be unfamiliar with. All three of my college roommates are from the city, so I certainly have a lot to learn from them as someone who unfortunately smells manure when driving with the windows down. Growth is not only important in regards to maturity and finding your purpose, but also in learning to empathize with the various types of people one encounters in the real world. Since we can grow from absorbing the knowledge and experiences of people we meet in the future, it is evident that we can also help others in growing themselves. Through whatever your plans are for the future, I hope you can all find a way to inspire others to grow as individuals, whether it is the people you haven't met yet or the peers seated around you today. In order for everyone in our generation to grow to their full potential when entering young adulthood, we must inspire each other while also being willing to receive inspiration. I would like to thank all of the people who have already inspired me when I was stressed out over a test, needed extra motivation, or just wanted someone to talk to. My family has constantly supported me through every cheerleading event, extracurricular activity, AP class, and anything else that was important to me. My peers have gifted me with some of my favorite high school memories and have been incredibly encouraging. My teachers made me realize that grades are not the main purpose of school. 
even though that may be what placed me on the stage today, and I got the senior superlative of most likely to cry over a B. In school, using your mistakes to fuel your curiosity and passion for learning is much more important than receiving an A on every assignment you turn in. Therefore, I hope that through each of your own mistakes when entering adulthood, you can find greater passion to conquer the obstacles placed before you. Conquering these obstacles will make you grow to understand that you are in control of your own life path. Thank you for listening. Grow on. Thank you, Diavion, and congratulations. Before I present several academic awards this evening, I would like to take this opportunity to correct an error that was made when presenting awards at our senior award ceremony on May 23rd. I would like to recognize the following students who should have received the Donegal School District Academic Medal that evening and should be uh, recognized for graduating in the top 10% of their class. Would the following students please stand and remain standing? Teresa Berger, Brooke Henry, Morgan Mulhausen, and Hadley Schoff. Could you please join me in giving these students a round of applause? I would also ask at this time that all the other students who received the Donegal School District Academic Medals for graduating the top 10% of their class, please stand. Let's give them a round of applause as well. You may be seated. Now it is my pleasure to announce several academic awards. Our first award this evening is the Mount Joy Lions Club Valedictorian Award. This award is presented to the highest ranking student in the class in scholarship. The recipient of this year's award is Hunter Gaiman. <laughs> Presenting tonight's award is the pres president of the Mount Joy Lions Club, Mr. Tim Markovitz. Congratulations, Hunter. Our next award is the Marietta Charitable Trust Salutatorian Award. This award is presented to the student's second highest in scholastic rank. The recipient of this year's award is Diavion Musser. Congratulations, the Avion. The next award recognizes a student enrolled in a program at the Lancaster County Career and Technology Centers. The Mount Joy Lions Club Career and Technology Valedictorian Award is presented to the graduating Donegal senior who ranks first scholastically at the Career and Technology Centers and has exhibited qualities of leadership and service. The recipient of this year's award is Hannah Milan. <laughs> Presenting tonight's award is the president of the Mount Joy Lions Club, Mr. Tim Markovitz. Congratulations, Hannah. 
The last award that I have the honor of announcing this evening is the Madeline G. McDaniel Memorial Award. This award is given in honor and memory of Madeline McDaniel, who was the grandmother of Morgan and Abigail Lay. Morgan and Abigail graduated third and fourth respectfully in the Donegal High School class of 1994. The award is presented to the senior who has the third highest grade point average in the graduating class. The recipient of the award, this award is Alyssa Werner. Congratulations, Alyssa. At this time, I would like to recognize Marcel Tura. Marcel, could you please make your way to the stage? Marcel is an exchange student from Barcelona, Spain who joined our Donegal family this past August. He, he was hosted by the Snow family during his time here. This evening, we would like to present Marcel with a flag of the United States, which was flown over the US Capitol. The flag is being presented on behalf of US Senator Bob Casey. Dr. Lausch, Mr. Overlander, school board members, faculty members, parents, relatives, and honored guests, at this time it is my pleasure to present to you the class of 2022. Before I formally address the class of 2022, I would like to recognize several groups of people. First, our DHS faculty and the faculty of Donegal School District for all you have done to teach, motivate, guide, and mentor this year's graduating class. Next, to my secretary, Mrs. Tina Mag, for her tireless efforts to help organize all the events of graduation. Third, our high school administrative team, assistant principals Mrs. Heather Herhauger, Mrs. Nicole Roberts, and athletic director and extracurricular um, director, Mr. Frank Hawkins. I am blessed to work with such a fine group of individuals. I want to express my sincere gratitude for them for their support throughout this year. Next, to our entire Donegal High School maintenance and custodial crew, who helped prepare our wonderful facilities for this evening's event. I would also like to thank Mr. John Coleman and his tech crew for their efforts in producing tonight's ceremony. And finally, last but not least, our parents and guardians of our graduating seniors. I would personally like to thank you for your support you have shown to Donegal High School during the past several years. Seniors, can you please stand and join me in a round of applause for all those I have mentioned. All right, you may be seated. Going into the 2018-19 school year, DHS was given fair warning that the incoming freshman class was a handful. Yes, the class of 2022 had earned a reputation 
of not only being the biggest class of the Donegal School District at that time, 280 plus students, but also a challenging group. In your freshman year, you lived up to your billing, but you soon settled in. I am proud to say that I have had the last four years to get to know you and watch you grow. At the beginning of this year, at the senior class meeting, I shared a saying that my father-in-law always said about his kids. And I think this holds true about my relationship with you. I wouldn't buy you for a nickel, but I wouldn't sell you for a million dollars. Now that you're leaving us, you got to think about that a little bit, all right? <laughs> he is a wise man. So now that you're leaving us, it's time for me to offer a few words of advice. I want to give you some useful words of advice, and I wanted to make sure it fits your future plans. So for that, I consulted the 21-22 yearbook and your future plans that you detailed in your senior bios. Yes, I read through them all. I was truly impressed by what I read. Here are the few things seniors wrote about their future plans. My plan is to do something never seen before and lay on my deathbed saying, I'm glad I, instead of I wish I. Pursue a career I'm passionate in, eventually make a difference in the world for the better. Make my story worth hearing. And I can use my knowledge to enrich lives of others. But one of my favorites was I'm still figuring out my options. However, there were some common themes throughout your senior bios, and I'm going to provide you advice on three of them. Like any other modern day scholar, I did my research. I reviewed countless hours of Instagram reels to make sure that I found the best advice for you to follow, all right? Your first theme, Enjoy life. Who doesn't want that, right? While we all strive for this, we all run into problems, stressors, and worries. It's how we handle these that could dictate how much we enjoy our lives. I watched a reel posted on Billionaire's Drive where this professor was holding out a glass of water, and he asked students how much it weighed. Students guessed the weight, but eventually the professor said, it's not really about how much the glass of water weighs, it's how long you hold on to that glass of water. The professor then went on to equate holding the glass of water to stressors and worries in life. If you hold on to these, it can take your focus away from things that matter to worrying more about the water in the glass. As you go about life, and add more water to your glass, more stressors, this can paralyze you and make you incapable of doing anything but focusing on the glass of water, and then you become unable to enjoy your life. The advice here is easy. Pour out some water, put down the glass. Don't carry a full glass of water with you throughout your life. The second theme was live a happy life. Sort of like the first one, again, a no-brainer. Everybody wants that. In a gold cast Instagram reel, Bob Proctor, does anybody know who Bob Proctor is? He's an old guy, very wise, all right? He took an hourglass, like this one, all right? Got this from the prop closet, all right? And he talked about what we should focus on. Basically, Mr. Proctor compared the sand in an hourglass to our lives, all right? The bottom represents the past. The top represents the future. But we can't do anything about the sand in the bottom. And really, none of us know how much sand is in the top. Where we should focus is in the middle. It represents the time we have now. As Bob said it, if we make our mind up that we're going to do what's best for us right now, we're going to live a pretty good life. Finally, the third theme, this was not surprising, start a family and have kids. 
do you really want to do that? <laughs> My advice on this one isn't so much about family dynamics or having children. It's about finding that soulmate, which could, if you're lucky, lead to getting married and having a family. I will add this. It is the best job you will ever, ever have, besides being a principal. I watched this reel of a clip from the movie Juno where the father's advice to his daughter is simply this. To find a person who loves you for exactly who you are, good mood, bad mood, ugly, pretty, handsome, what have you, the right person will still think the sun shines out of your butt. <laughs> that's the kind of person that's works, worth sticking with. I would like to think that's why we have stuck with you during your four years here at DHS. <laughs> minus, minus the sun shining out of your butt part. Hey, here it is, guys. The hard thing about life is it doesn't come with an instruction manual. And how could it? Life is dynamic, ever-changing, but these words of advice that I just gave you that I have mentioned are just a few things that can help you navigate through it. Class of 2022, I congratulate you on reaching this milestone. And please remember, we do love you, and you will always be a member of our tribe. <laughs> Dr. Lausch, I would like to present to you the members of the Donegal High School Class of 2022 as candidates for graduation. Mr. Haldeman, I think we need to talk later about the amount of time you're on Instagram. <laughs> Good evening. I also want to start with just one quick recognition here because I'm thrilled to see so many members of our board of directors and our teaching staff who uh, prioritize coming to celebrate your students, your children. Even more so, we've got people who have retired from work here at Donegal who still come back because they care about these kids so much. So would you please, some of them are in the audience, most of them are up here, would you please recognize these people for giving you their time? So I'm gonna to speak directly to you also, class, and I'm about to say that, or I'm gonna say that you're about to enter into adulthood at a rather challenging time. I'm saying this not because of any virus or election or conflict that's going on. I say this because I think the truth is a difficult concept to find and understand right now. Just take a five minute stroll through Facebook or some other platform, and it's easy to see your friends posting things not based necessarily on fact, but based on rumor and emotion. The pressure to conform nowadays is heavy and real. And it's easy to fall into a pattern of accepting what people tell you to believe, even in the absence of fact. So I urge you to hold on to your personal beliefs and your identity. Do not lose who you are because of pressure. I'm about to give you your final test here at Donegal. It's an easy one, I promise. There are only two questions, and the answer is either true or false, okay? It's going to tell you whether or not you may have succumbed to the pressure to conform already. Question one, everything I read on the internet is true. <laughs> Question two, social media is my primary source of information of things that occur in my community, my state, and the world. Oh. If you answered true to one or both of those statements, I'm sorry to tell you that you may have already compromised your identity. <laughs> so I want to offer you a piece of advice that uh, could assist you in avoiding the pressure to act in a certain way or to believe things just because someone said you should. Throughout my life, I've found this piece of advice to be very helpful. It's kept me out of some trouble at times, probably on more than one occasion. I want you to identify at least one person in your life who loves you enough to tell you the truth, even if the truth hurts. 
It can be a friend, a parent, a coworker, a trusted adult, anyone that you trust. Use that individual as a sounding board. Share your thoughts, your feelings, your potential actions with that person. And if they truly love you and care about you, they're going to be honest with you. And it can help you avoid trouble. But most importantly, it will allow you to retain the special characteristics that make you, you. Each of you is a unique individual who brings special gifts to our world. Do not compromise who you are in order to conform to what others want you to be. Believe what you choose to believe and be who you are. Our world needs more people like you. People who are strong, intelligent, compassionate, kind, and capable, who are not afraid to think for themselves. Thank you for listening. I want to congratulate each of you. I kept it brief because right now I'm the only thing standing between you and a diploma. <laughs> but I do have one more thing that I have to say to our board president, Mr. Overlander. Mr. Overlander, by the powers vested in me as a commissioned officer of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I hereby declare before all persons assembled here tonight that these outstanding members of the class of 2022 have met or exceeded all requirements established by the Pennsylvania Department of Education and the Board of School Directors for the Donegal School District to become recipients of a high school diploma. It is great pride, with great pride, I state, the class of 22 is ready to graduate. Thank you, Dr. Lausch. I'm gonna keep it really brief because then we start handing out to the diplomas and we can start the celebrations for the seniors and for their families. On behalf of the Donegal School Board, I'd just like to congratulate the class of uh, 2022 on making it to this final day of your high school careers. I know it's been a long journey, especially over the last two and a half years with COVID and all the obstacles you've had to go through. In a few short moments after you receive your diploma, you'll become uh, an alumni of Donegal High School. As a member of, the, of a graduate of the class of 1990, I want to welcome you uh, into that small club. And also I want to say that wherever your education or your job or your travels may take you, please don't forget where you come from. Um, always remember that Donegal is a special place and you had the chance to make special bonds here, not only with your teachers, with the administrators, but also with your classmates, with their families, and also with all of your friends, especially over the last several hard years. One final piece of advice that I wanted to give to this class is as a Donegal graduate, to take pride in wherever you go and just remember to stay true to who you are. When I started my first job uh, out, of, out of law school, um, I was in our Philadelphia office getting training, and I remember I was very nervous, and someone was very nice to me on the elevator going up to, I think, floor 15 to get my computer training. Um, that same person then, later that day, I was going down to get something to eat, and I had forgotten my wallet uh, at home, so I had no money. That person brought me a soft pretzel out on the Philadelphia street. I later come to learn that that person was, was one of our senior ranking attorneys and, and someone who'd been with the firm for over 30 years. Uh, that person treated me with kindness and with grace. Uh, I learned early in my life that you have to treat everybody the same with kindness or grace, whether it's Dr. Lausch, the superintendent, whether it's one of the janitors in the school, whether it's somebody who serves you your coffee at Sheets. You have to always treat everybody the same, and that's how I've tried to live my life professionally and also as a, a parent and as a father. So again, on, on behalf of the school board, I wanted to congratulate everybody, and please don't forget where you came from as your travels take you uh, away from Donegal. Thank you. All right, at this time, we're going to announce the graduates 
for the Donegal High School class of 2022. Announcing the graduates this evening will be Ryan Beatty, class of 2022 president, and Emma Miller and Katie Cook, student council co-presidents. We would ask that you please hold your applause until all graduates' names are read to ensure that the families and students have the opportunity to hear each graduate's name read aloud. Hunter Isaac Gaiman. Diavion Murray Musser. Elizabeth Renee Allen. Andrew Michael Arbogast. Kylise Ene Bantam. Kieran Edward Barber. Maud Elizabeth Barlett. Nathaniel Ryan Barnes. Austin Michael Barrick. Clayton Ralph Barton. <laughs> Emily Elizabeth Barton. Ariana Marie Bass. Lamique Yadiel Bayon. Caliandra Lynn Becker. Samantha Joy Beckman.
Ryan Thomas Beatty. Clara Elise Bigney. Luke Calvin Bixler. Angelina Marie Black. Jacob Oliver Bloom. Tristan Ryan Bowers. Brian William Breedlove. Ian Parker Brown. Micah Allen Brown. Viana Murray Bryden. Tressa Lydia Berger. Victoria Jean Burton. <laughs> Bethany Love Butler. Ivana Marie Cancel. Owen Nicholas Carnes. Emma Mary Kazat. Valeria Alejandra Sia. <laughs> Owen Michael Champ. Cody Anthony Lacey Clark. Regan Audrey Clark. Kaylee Luce Class. Greenlee Constance Cochran.
Brandon James Coco. Jaden Morgan Coley. Jamara Lauren Coyasso. Catherine Lynn Cook. Trevor Hart Cooper. Gavin Michael Creek. Christopher Josue Cruz. Jorel Michael Curtis. Levi Israel Daniker. Maurice Darnell Davis, Jr. Jack Philip Dearborn. Thomas James Devonshire. Amy Diaz. Isabel Peyton Stoner Doan. AJ Dunnan. Mason Thomas Dreggy. Jaden Rene Dupler. Andrea Marie Dyer. Jason O'Neill Echeverria, Jr. Colin Jace Eckinger. Nicholas Chase Eichelberger. Christine Carol Emsweiler.
Tristan Edward Ank. Jacob Nisley Herb. George Figueroa Guzman. Owen Gregory Fisher. Emily Diane Flowers. Luke Cyprian Fountain. Colin James Fox. Vincent Charles Fulvio. Aiden Nathaniel Funk. Jose O'Neill Garcia Vega. Thomas Montgomery Garner. Ryan David George. Devin Lee Gockenauer. Nicholas Ryan Gockley. Obed Isaac Galon Tok. Harry William Gonzalez, Jr. <laughs> Arthur Jose Green. Nivia Diane Green. <laughs> Isabella Grace Sophia Gruber. Ethan Michael Hallbleib. Savannah Marie Hamilton. Megan Scott Harlacker. Yeah. 
Apollo Rose Hawley. Xander Heisey. Brooke Elena Henry. Braden Michael Herrick. Tyler James Hess. Michael Edward Hines. Daniel Lewis Hockenberry. Elissa Morgan Hoffmaster. Bailey D. Hoke. Anne Elizabeth Hollinger. Ashley Nicole Hoover. Lillian Grace Horst. Troy Allen Hosetter Jr. Colin James Hottenstein. <laughs> Kyle Alexander Hunter. <laughs> Kenneth James Hunger the Third. Cole Joshua Michael Hunt. Connor Logan Heil. Lacey Marie Imhoff. Christian Mikel Ippoliti. Melvin Saw Johnson. Samuel Thomas Johnston. Wendell Jeremiah Jonas. Yeah! 
Aubrey Marie Jones. Connor Richard Colwell. Josiah Robert Keller. Hunter Robert Kreidler. Kelsey Marie Lambert. Isabella Jean Lapp. Jillian Lawrence. Caitlin Brooke Lead. Grant Thomas Liebfried. Ellie Rosa Lewis. Vincent Hantau Lu. Isaac David Lloyd. Delaney Elizabeth Long. Madeline Anita Long. Gianna Jade Lujan. Cody Michael Latrell. Sophia Marie Mackison. Gerson Malave Cortez. Alana Elizabeth Marion. Soraya Jolie Marrero. Kaylee Marie Marshall. Khalil Maurice Mazden. Hope Marie May. Congrats, 
Marissa Lee May. Charlene Alize McNally. Tierney Joel Melhorn. Yeah. Emma Lynette Miller. Jack Orlando Miller. Paige Lee Miller. Jordan Ann Moore. Cole Avery Morton. Autumn Jane Mott. <laughs> Kylan Joseph Mott. <laughs> Hayden Michael Mowday. Morgan Lynn Mulhausen. Ian Jeffrey Mumal. Silas Dean Mumper. Joshua Andrew Myers. <laughs> Hannah Ann Mylan. Neville de Missinkos Mube. <laughs> Francini Janelle Nichols. Evan Hutzel Nisley. Dylan Ryan Nolt. Seth Andrew Nornhold.
Accepting Seth's diploma this evening are his parents, Rich and Kathy Nornhold. Seth is a member of the DHS class of 2022 who died of injuries sustained in a tragic vehicle accident in July 2020. Seth was 16 year old, years old at the time. Seth was a devoted member of the Donegal High School marching band, jazz band, and concert band. This evening, we honor Seth as a graduate of the class of 2022 by placing his cap and gown at his assigned seat. Seniors, can you join us again and honor your classmate, Seth Nornhold? Sofia Carola Ortiz. Camden Eric Michael Palmer. Isaiah Joaquin Parker. Olivia Grace Paul. Cassidy Jade Paz. Peachy <laughs> Destiny Marie Perez. <laughs> Hannah Abigail Peterman. Julia Reese Pyatt. Amel Mariah Ramos Gonzalez. Grace Ianche Randazzo. Desiree Marie Rapp. Bryce Maddox Rhodes. Mariah Lachey Rivera. (laughs) 
Nadia Calise Rivera. Ashton John Tucker Robertson. Sarah Abigail Rodriguez. Taina Ivelisse Rosario. Samuel Lewis Rostein. Sophia Marie Saez. Malik St. Florent. Alexander Xavier Salvatore. Brett Jonathan Souter. Sarah Michelle Softly. Kirsten Elizabeth Schuler. Hunter Blaine Seifert. Sky Lynn Sensnig. Joseph Tyler Sense. Jessica Assam Mobark Shaker. <laughs> Haley Nicole Shepler. <laughs> Hadley Grace Schof. Ethan Hunter Shonk. Aiden Michael Sipe. Lucia Marie Skirball. Kevin David Slattery. Andrew Jonathan Small.
Riley Hannah Smith. Tristan Allen Stark. Mia Shea Steffi. Lillian Grace Stamen. Nicholas James Stewart. Cody Jacob Stow. Jakia Samida Stuckey. Iris Faye Thomas. Amy Tran. Gabrielle Bianca Troutman. Marcel Tora. Joseph Michael Terbetsky. Logan Lee Tyre. Elise Morgan Wagner. Haley Alexis Wagner. <laughs> Sonia Ann Wagner. <laughs> Dylan Michael. Wakefield. <laughs> Allison Nicole Wallander. Henry Michael Warburton. Morgan Lee Weaver. Daniel Adam Weiser. Alyssa Bell Warner. Damian Ryan White. Rowan Baylor 
willing. Randy Lee Honeybone Whitman. Brandon Daryl Whitmer. Donald Edward Wolf the Third. Catherine Donna Wolf. Meg Elizabeth Zell. Ellen Kate Zern. Brianna May Zobro. Alexander Michael Zook. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I once again will introduce class president Ryan Beatty for the response of the class. Seniors, could you please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the class, I proudly present to you the 2022 graduates of Donegal High School. As our chorus organizes on the risers, I would please ask that all audience members stand and join the class and the chorus in singing the Donegal High School alma mater. I would please ask at the conclusion of the alma mater, the graduates remain standing and our guests in the auditorium this evening be seated until all the graduates have recessed into, into the gymnasium and have an opportunity to gather together one last time to celebrate and throw their caps. We will broadcast this on the screen here in the auditorium so everyone here will be able to see it. Senior males, could you please remove your hats? 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Donegal High School alma mater. All right, seniors, you're going to remain standing. Guests, could you please sit? Seniors, I want you to take the opportunity now to check and make sure your diploma is inside your cover. Uh, that was my last joke you'll ever hear. Just remember, when you leave the auditorium, you will go into the gym, give your last hurrah, but do not forget to pick up your diploma. That cover is worth nothing. It's your diploma. So make sure you pick that up on the table. Mrs. Mag and the other secretaries are there. It's alphabetical. You pick that up. All right, folks. Graduates, you are dismissed.